Okay, I've uh, covered this with tissue paper and used uh, clear gesso to adhere it all down and left some, as you can see, over the edge because I want to glue this on the other side. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to cut off the excess and leave a couple of inches all the way around. And you can always save the scraps and use them in another project. corners I'm going to just cut those at an angle Dandy paintbrush. This is, like I said before, just a cheap brush, and I'm going to put some gesso all the way around so I can start adhering. The rest of this down to the other side. I'm going to lay down some clear gesso and then fold this over and gesso on top. And keep doing that <clears throat> all the way around. gesso for put some paper plate off to the side. I use paper plates. Styrofoam plates, what have you for paint. It's easy because when you're done you just toss it and you know when it gets really bad toss it out and get a new one. So whatever is easy, easiest. I'm gonna quickly go around before this gets too dry and just try to get it down and then come back and cover the top. The coat it just so. better 
better job of covering the top of this. Make sure we got it all down good. Kind of use my finger, I guess, to do make sure some of it and get the bubbles out. Make sure it's down, push down good and covering the corners. the edges. All right, so we've got that good. And covered, oops. The wax paper is slipping, but that's okay. You can't see this, but probably very well, but um, over here, the edge kind of tore. It looks a little, like it tore a little bit. And I really wanted to have it. Good edge on that, so I'm going to just fix it with another little piece and smooth it down. So I like that nice, clean, rounded edge there. And We'll leave this to dry as well. Okay, we're back and um, I've completed the gluing down or the gessoing down of the tissue paper on the cover. And um, I did a couple tests on the edge here to determine what color I wanted to put on top of this to stain this tissue paper because I don't really particularly care that it's white. I want to stain it a different color and um, I don't know if you can see that but you can see the um, burgundy underneath and in places you can just see a hint of um, text that was uh, stamped on there and so I want to stain it a color that goes with the burgundy underneath but also that doesn't cover up too much of um, so much that you can't still see what's underneath so I've decided that this um, Adirondack color wash in cranberry is gonna work out just nicely and go with um, what I'm trying to accomplish here. It's a very strong color um, so you know it needs to be used sparingly um, and it seems like that the best option is to brush it on so um, 
And so I'm going to try a couple of different things. I'm going to try to spray a little bit and then brush it. And uh, as you can see, very, very strong. And then try to brush it across, which just as I had suspected, it's really, really, really strong and um, a lot darker than I would like to see. And I just want it to lightly stain. So I think what I'm going to do is spray this um, on my paper plate here and then just or pour it and then use the brush and that way I can better control how much goes on my cover. So we're going to Try to see how this works. And I'm going to have paper towel handy to try to blot areas that I think might be soaking up too much color. Because again, I just want it to be a hint. I don't want it to completely saturate everything and not be able to see what's underneath. So I'm going to work on this and we will come back and show you the finished project because this is going to take some time to get it to where I'm happy with it and get the right coverage and saturation without it being too saturated. So we'll be back. Okay, we're back. Um, I've completed the cover, as you can see. I stained the um, outside of it with the burgundy um, Adirondack color wash. And um, I really like it. I thought it would go best with the burgundy that we originally um, painted on here. And you can see some of, you know, a hint of the text underneath. I don't know if you can get a good picture of that. But you can see a little bit of a hint of, of the text that was stamped underneath. I also had to shave off a little bit of my signatures um, because they were still too tall. As much as I tried to make this cover tall enough for it. It was just right at the edge, top and bottom. And I really kind of wanted to get a at least a little bit of space. Um, so I shaved off about um, uh, an eighth of an inch. And then I had to do the same to the top of my template so that it would match. So the next thing I'm going to do is figure out okay, where I want these pages and oh you can also see on here I cut out um, some um, burgundy paper and glued it and adhered it to the inside and of course I painted along the seams before I glued in the paper so that um, you wouldn't be able to, it would be burgundy instead of white and the reason for that is just so that you have an e a better hinge for the book and it doesn't get too too thick there in the hinges so I'm going to lay my signature out here to see exactly where I want the top and the bottom and as you remember um, this here designated the top of the signature so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put marks on my spine on one side and then on the other. Now it looks like it's aligning with the top of my burgundy paper here. So that's a pretty good sign. Let's see. I'm going to 
gonna take a ruler. Draw the lines across and then I'm going to measure my spine which is uh, about two inches and I've got five signatures so I need to figure out the placement of my five signatures. So I'm going to go in the middle, that's one. And we obviously can't, don't want to put holes on the, um, where the fold is, because then um, that would interfere. So we actually want to make sure that our first hole from the fold is at least a quarter of an inch in. So I'm going to put a a line there and a line over here and then we want to go in between the center line and those two lines however that seems like there's an awful lot of space between there so I think I want to move this over an eighth of an inch further so it's not so close it still seems kind of close to that and then in between that that would be Right about there. So that looks like a pretty good placement. Let me get rid of that extra line so I don't get confused. That makes may it looks like it's more it's evenly spaced. So I'm gonna go down here and do the same thing at the bottom. Gonna line up my ruler for in there one inch is the center mark we came in three-eighths of an inch on one side and then the other and then it was another three-eighths of an inch actually it was um, five-sixteenths of an inch is where the other line was. So there we have it. Where our five signatures will be. So I'm going to line my ruler up and then draw a line down. Oops. Make sure that you Get it on the line, otherwise your signatures will be crooked. So then where we, the lines cross, you can look at that a little closer, where the intersection of these lines cross each other, that is where you would put your hole for the signature. So I'm going to go through and put my holes right at those intersections with my awl. This is going to be a little bit harder to do because I'm going through several layers. Probably what be, would be even easier for this is to um, have a mat underneath. Make 
it's much easier if you have something underneath where you can really, and this is just a styrofoam mat, I guess. I don't, I think it came in, um, came with a uh, glass mat that I bought. I guess it was supposed to protect the glass mat from getting broke, but I keep everything and so it's really come in handy. I've used it for quite a few projects. Yeah, this is definitely much easier. So I'm going to get my hole started. And actually I found this with my other um, smash book that I did. Get your hole started and then go back and, and really kind of work them to get them so that they're for some reason my all oh, whoops looks like I bent the tip of it that's lovely very sharp tip and apparently I pushed too hard So I'll be careful that I'm not tearing up. My cover as I'm trying to do this and then I'll I'll get it. I'll fix the tip here. Actually, my dear husband is Mr. Fix-It Man, <laughs> which is lovely, because it used to be where anything needed to be fixed, I had to do it myself, so it's really nice to have someone to help fix things, and he is definitely <laughs> much more patient than I am, and much better at fixing things than I am. Okay, so we got our holes poked through our binding. And now we can start sewing in our signatures. Something I wanted to show is on a project me and my granddaughter was working on, I was having a really hard time with the needle that um, I was using. So I ended up making you can see that a needle out of a paper clip. Part of my problem was trying to get the get it threaded with a thick rope and so I did use this and it actually worked out really good. So I'm gonna try to use that again and see how that goes. So I have some cotton um, rope here, thread, whatever you want to call it. You can use uh, dental floss, um, wax thread they say is easier, um, you can also uh, use a, the um, thread for needlepoint which um, a lot of people seem to have, but I think I'm just going to go with this. And so I'm going to measure this out two, at least two and a half times, because you're going to go one way, back the other way, and then have, you'll need enough room to tie it off. this in my makeshift needle and we're going to start with the first signature and basically it's very simple and there's a lot of videos on YouTube how to do this you would go into the middle hole let me see if I can get this in here 
For some reason, I'm not finding the, the hole coming out. Alrighty, this is where. Um, like I was saying, if you get your holes big enough, you won't have any problems. So go through the center hole. Pull this all the way through and leave a little bit of a tail because you're going to need room to sew or to tie it on. Then we're going to start in the middle, the very last signature, and we're going to poke this through that. And it's a little tough getting that to come through. But not too bad. Then we're going to go up one. You can go up or down. It doesn't really matter. Go through the binding. Go through. Then go through your signature. Which might help if I open it up. Go down through the next hole. I'm just going to poke these out again because for some reason they're having a really hard time. Finding the hole, so I'm just going to go ahead and go poke through them again. Go through. Okay, so now what you're going to do find the center so I can pull it tight. Let's go back in, go down to the next hole. So we're going to go back in there. Here it goes. A little tough getting it go back through because these holes probably aren't as big as they could be. And then pull it. Oh. Alrighty. I'm trying to get a pull lot through. There we go. Once you get it going, it's not too bad. It's just getting it going. I'm going to go back through. Holes in your signature. Got through two of them, and I need to get through the other three.
But then what you do when you get down, get this far, you skip over the middle hole and you go through the next one down. Here. Again, it's this thread's probably a lot thicker than you need. I don't know. I like it, it works for me. And then go back up through. Get it in there. <laughs> the problem is the thread's too thick, my awl is too tiny, and it's like really giving me a hard time. Arr. But, you know, you keep working it, and it'll eventually come. There we go. And then go through the signature. And I'm just going to go ahead and... And again, this, you know, I couldn't really find an awl, actually, for clay. And on the other end, it had, like, a hook on it, which I had my husband cut off. So this really isn't the right kind of tool for this job. Um, I think an awl has got a lot thicker shaft on it than this thing does, but anyway, one of these days I'll try to find a real one. So come up through the bottom and then you go back through the next one. Okay. and then here's where you go back up through the middle Once you get this far, thread's getting tangled up here. You want to make sure that, again, it's all pulled good and tight. I think this could be tighter. And you want to have one thread on one side, one on the other, and just tie it off really good and tight. And there you have, snip it off. The first signature is sewn in. And you keep doing that with um, the other four until you've got them all sewed in. So I'm going to um, go ahead and work on getting the others sewed in and we'll be back and see what the finished um, journal's gonna look like. Okay, I've uh, completed the binding on this book with all the signatures in it. And as you can see, um, there is plenty of room in this to expand, and it may look like that a lot more signatures could have been sold in this book, but um, I have as many in here 
uh, pages as what was in here in this journal and you can see this journal is busting at the seams so um, I need the extra room because trust me folks you whenever you get start doing the art journaling and painting and and all the things that come along with it it's gonna start expanding on you very quickly um, even though like I said I pulled half the pages out of here thinking that would be you know more than enough room um, I should have pulled a lot more out so there you go a completed journal um, I'm really looking forward to working in this journal and um, starting to do some pages in here um, I will be doing the same as what I've, I've done in this journal um, the one I've been working in is taping and gessoing the pages just so that I I can put as much paint and water and whatever else I want on them without a problem. And, uh, and like I said, this one here is almost done, so I can't wait to finish this up and get started on the next one using this one. I hope that inspires some of you to create your own art journal. I can do a lot more to this, um, and I, I may do more to it in the future um, by doing some kind of a decorating on the covers um i don't know about this whether i'm going to try to stain the the thread on the binding of this to blend in more or just leave it like that um i guess i'll make that decision you know some other time but all in all i'm pretty happy with the way it turned out not exactly what i had envisioned but you know that's the way it goes with art and i like i said i'm very pleased with uh how it turned out so look, getting excited and looking forward to using it i hope everybody has a great day and again i hope this inspires you to create your own art journals